Hi, everyone, and welcome back to our blog from the Kama Sutra to 2020, where we look at your questions, your concerns, even your worries around all things to do with sex and sexuality. So unfortunately, we don't have Dr. Anvita Madan Behel with us today due to medical reasons, but I do have an amazingly wonderful guest for you all today, the one, the only, Ranveer Alabadia. Now, Ranveer is a very special person. He's, um, he's a podcaster, he's a YouTuber, he's a serial entrepreneur, he's the co-founder of Monk Entertainment, and I could go on and on. But the reason that he's on this podcast with us today is two reasons. One, one is that um, he is very, very high up on my list of favorite young people. And the other is that he is amazingly connected to the youth of India, and I think that his point of view today will be extremely helpful. So Ranveer, I would like to invite you onto this podcast to bring your perspective to add to the advice that the Kama Sutra has to give. Welcome. Ma'am, thank you so much for uh, having me on the show. Thank you so much for the kind introduction. Uh, you're one of my favorite people in general. So I'm glad to be a part of anything you're creating. Honestly, an honor. Okay, so this is an amazingly good um, mutual admiration society. I like the way it started. <laughs> but Ranveer, almost all of your amazing followers, I mean, Ranveer, for everybody out there who doesn't know this, Ranveer has a following of about 3 million. So he really doesn't need any kind of introduction. But just in case there are a few people out there who don't know who Ranveer is, he's also known as Bear Biceps. Now, I have to ask you, why Bear Biceps? I think back in the day, the idea was to create a fitness, fitness based channel, like we'd only talk about fitness. And the idea I wanted to promote back then is that you can balance out fitness with partying. Little did I know that my life would unfold in a very different way where I, I don't drink any alcohol anymore. I'm not into bodybuilding anymore. But uh, I the name stuck around. It's just one of those names. So that's why be a bicep. Okay. Well, it's strange that you should say that and also quite cool because the Kama Sutra has a lot to say about physical fitness, about exercise. They actually say that it makes you really sexy. And as a matter of fact, I mean, I'm going to tell you a little bit more about this in a while, but it, 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 there, are, um, there are entire routines of exercise that were laid out for men and women. And some of the most graphic literature in Sanskrit I mean, none of our literature is very graphic. It's not, it's not obscene in any way, but the most graphic ones always follow an exercise routine. I'm going to tell you more about that later, but tell me how does this actually fit in with your ideas of fitness, of um, sexual health generally? Um, I mean, I feel like as a guy, you really start seeing your body change somewhere in your mid-20s. Uh, you, you start seeing a change when you're 11 years old, but uh, it, you start seeing the effects of fitness along with sexual health only in your mid-20s, where you also contrast your life against guys who've not really taken care of their bodies. I see a lot of that happening around me. A lot of my friends who are, see, who are chain smokers or they st are still into binge drinking in their mid-20s and who don't take care of their health. Um, you know, I'm, I'm even seeing people who are dealing with issues like erectile dysfunction, uh, someone else is dealing with some psychological uh, sexual issues. Uh, and I feel like that's the gift of fitness, especially for a man, that uh, your body works fine. Uh, I believe that your hormones are in place, so your testosterone is always feeling good. And um, I do believe that, I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, ma'am, you'd know better than me, but I feel like sexual health is also linked to your mental health in a lot of ways. So if your sexual health is good, uh, you're more likely to deal with all the professional challenges and, you know, the life challenges that life throws at you in your 20s. Uh, and the core of all that, I feel, is physical fitness. And just speaking about physical fitness, I feel every human, not just men, but generally people should embrace it in order to blow off steam. Uh, I was listening to a podcast of Jerry Seinfeld, and he said that any of life's problems can be solved with a combination of weight training and meditation. So that's something I believe in as well. I agree with you entirely. I believe, I mean, I'm now 58. So, you know, you get to that age where the body starts to give up on you and so many things fall apart. But mm. I actually believe that 85% of our issues can be redeemed. They can be dealt with through physical exercise. 
It's so good for you. And yes, there is that whole issue of uh, how it impacts our mental health and so on. But actually you mentioned the, um, the point of erectile dysfunction. So we do know um, in the Kamshastras, they say that for pure pleasure, for pleasure to really reach its height, you have to have an extremely good blood flow to the genitals, to the sexual organs. And that is what I guess creates the uh, it creates a, a good erection, a strong erection, and so on. And certainly, and it also it's the same for women as well. So the fact that you mentioned that exercise might be related to erectile dysfunction. I think it's definitely related to it. Um, I'm not saying that that's always the case because you can exercise too much and go over the, mm. you know, over the brink and the other side. But by and large, I think it um, it does make a lot of difference. So if you were actually telling people how to sort this problem out, what what advice would you give them? What would you tell them to do in the way of physical fitness of exercise? Um. I mean, earlier, uh, the bodybuilding version of me would definitely say, go hit the gym, go lift some weights. Uh, you know, the typical macho male advice. But over the years, I figured that fitness has a different definition for everyone. Uh, and the goal is to be consistent with one kind of physical activity. Uh, so whether you like dance, whether you like sport, whether you like just really long walks, marathon running, or weight training. Most guys end up liking weight training because the results of weight training are the same as what society has told you to do all your life. As in what, you know, society keeps highlighting Arnold Schwarzenegger's body or a WWF wrestler's body, WWE wrestler's body, uh, or a footballer's body. And uh, weight training results in that. And I also feel for a lot of men, as far as I understand the psychology of men, I feel like it, it, it does generally benefit from the process of weight training because guys need that little external stress on their body. And I've trained a lot of women as well. I've worked as a physical fitness trainer where I have to go to people's houses, train men, train women. But I always felt like guys responded better because the way a man's mind is built, you do need that external little bit of stress to just humble you up. Uh, women, it's a little different. I feel women kind of enjoy being in a state of flow even in the exercise. Uh, guys need to be kind of slapped down. So obviously, I mean, because... I really enjoy my own weight training. That's what I nudge, especially men towards. Okay, so yes, you're right. Men do uh, men do um, react to the visuals of weight training, better of uh, physical training, and weights do add up. They bulk up the muscles and so on. Um, I should tell you that uh, just before this second lockdown, this third lockdown, actually, that we've just entered our third lockdown in the UK, I took up boxing, and. Uh, it was amazingly good. I mean, it made me feel fantastic, but I don't want to bulk up. Hmm. What am I going to do? How do I stop myself from bulking up? I don't think that's what I want to look like. Um, so, you know, there, there is this uh, kind of image or this thought that a lot of women have generally that exercise does make you bulk up, but that, that's only true if you back up exercise with a huge amount of excess calories. So if you continue eating all your, all, all sorts of food while you're training, that's when you really, really bulk up. But uh, it is actually harder for women to put on a huge amount of size just because of the way their hormonal system is built. Again, this is me coming from the world of physical fitness and biology, and this is what I've studied and seen over the years. Um, but I'll, I'll tell you what, I, I also nudge a lot of women towards some form of strength training, which could be boxing because boxing also involves working your uh, central nervous system. You know, when you're throwing a punch, it could be yoga. It could be weight training, of course, because for women after the age of 25, your bone density, your muscle mass, all of it starts going down. For guys, that happens a lot later. That happens at age 40. But for women, it happens a lot earlier. So uh, if you do feel like you're bulking up, probably just reduce the intensity of training and just kind of watch your caloric intake. Uh, well, this is the <laughs> physical trainer and me waking up. Uh, yeah. But uh, uh, that's that's honestly what I figured over the years. Now it's been a while since I've trained people, and this always worked like a charm. 
Wonderful. I'll keep that in mind. So, um, Ranveer, as you know, this particular uh, program was started, this podcast was started a while ago with me and Anvita, who is a psychosexual therapist, to deal with a lot of the questions and the worries that a lot of young people were in, in India were writing in about. Because it seems to me that as the years go forward, none of the taboos have dropped. None of the mm. issues of sin and guilt that we have around sex and sexuality have stopped. And for some reason, there's even fewer places today to go to for advice. And so people were starting to write in and the emails were starting to grow. And we found that we needed an outlet somewhere where we could actually advise young people and everybody generally, but more the young people so that they could lead a slightly healthier life around their sexuality. We could answer a few more questions. Now, ideally what I want to know from you is you being in your mid twenties, and as I said, very connected with the youth of the country. What do you think are the things that are most concerning at the moment for young people? So ma'am, I honestly want to bring up a point I missed out in one of your previous questions. Uh, and this is something I've spoken to a lot of my guy friends about. Uh, so this happens to both men and women. A lot of people might have a lot of body image issues, uh, especially when it comes to you know, uh, I, I, it, it's because of, I, what's the word for it? Uh, unreal body standards, I think that's what they call it. Basically, you see film posters, you see posters of bodybuilders, you know, bikini models, and you believe that your body is supposed to be a certain way. So if they end up uh, trying to go and make love with someone, the underlying thought isn't, okay, let me enjoy this process or this experience. The thought is, oh my God, what's she thinking of my body? Are my moves looking bad? Is my stomach looking bad? And the same thing happens for not all women. I feel, I feel like women are a little more secure in their bodies than guys are. Um, I don't know. No, that's not true. At least, at least the ones I know on, uh, you know, that closely have been pretty secure. But uh, generally speaking, uh, my, my whole generation, I feel there's too many body image issues. So I've seen that exercise kind of fixes that for you. Because no, no city dwelling human, at least, or, and, and no Indian really expects a bodybuilder style body off of their partner or, you know, visible ab muscles or all that. People just expect you to be relatively fit. But this is something that the youth fails to understand or uh, just generally Indians fail to understand. That's also a huge issue uh, in people's sexual health or sexual mental health of that thing. So if you were going to deal with, let's say you were put out there and told, okay, Ranveer, you have one thing that you can fix for the people when it comes to sexuality or one thing that you can actually convince them to think differently about. Is this the one thing that you would pick? Um, this, and I'd probably say that, uh, don't attach yourself to porn because especially for men, porn changes the whole experience of sex. Like you kind of, look forward to uh, your own masturbation session rather than the actual sexual experience. So these two things, that if, if exercise is a part of your daily life, it will change your whole idea of sex. And secondly, too much of porn or any kind of por pornography addiction, that's going to spoil things for you and your sex life going forward. These two uh, points I'd probably highlight. I think that you're really right about the porn particularly. I find that it's so unreal. We say this mm. constantly uh, when Anvita and I do these talks. We say it constantly because, you know, it's a huge industry, multi-million dollar industry where they've got the best photoshopping equipment. So nothing is real. Not the way that your body looks, not the way that the sexual organs look, not even the way that you come. I mean, everything is photoshopped. So of course, nothing is real. But we do tend to base most of our images on what we see in pornography. And I think what's really sad for me is to me, and I think to most women, the whole idea of lovemaking is far beyond that one sexual act. You know, there's so much more to it. There's that whole seduction. There's that whole idea of pleasure, the, the, what comes before, what comes after. With pornography, it's so cut and dried that you don't understand, you know, that there is so much more to it. So we treat sex and sexuality almost like a train journey. You know, you get on and you've got to race to the finish. You know, you're on an express train. And we keep saying to people that, you know, there are stations along the way you can get off anywhere. Um, mm -hmm. 
but yeah, coming back to um, the, this point that you made about how people view their own body image. Uh, and, you know, you'd said earlier about erectile dysfunction and so on and so forth. You know, um, exercise actually plays a huge part in the way that we look at our own bodies as well. Mm. And unfortunately, women are most women are equally uncertain about their bodies. It's just something that it's been put upon us ever since advertising started. So um, with, um, with the Kama Sutra, they actually talk about certain types of exercise where it's not just an exercise, it becomes your alankar, it becomes your makeup, it becomes your ornamentation. So for women particularly, there's a, a particular ball game, almost like volleyball, which you play. And it makes you so sexy after you play it because you know you perspire, it changes the color of your skin, the way your body moves this way and that. It lowers your inhibitions, your hair gets a bit disheveled and so on, that it actually becomes your ornamentation. It becomes your makeup in a way. And interestingly, in all the ancient Sanskrit plays, in every single play, there is one particular point where the woman, where the heroine plays with the ball and she is irresistible at that point. And it always follows a really big seduction scene of some kind. So it's, it's really fascinating that along the way, we got into this corporate culture, which was all about sitting down behind a desk and working. And we lost that idea of, um, of exercising. And we lost the fact that it can have such a huge positive impact on us. Now, um, we can always revisit this point later. I think what I'd like to ask you about, you know, whenever I do a talk, Ranveer, the one question I always get asked is about monogamy. Somewhere, mm. somebody, some anthropologist somewhere wrote down that monogamy is not natural to human beings. It's mm. a point that gets picked up by everybody. Most people don't understand what they're saying. It's just become an excuse to, to sleep around or to, to have multiple partners and so on. Tell me, what, is, what, is, what do the young people think about this whole idea of monogamy not being natural or this idea that's been put into their head? Um, so ma'am, when it comes to monogamy, I feel you've got to kind of take a step back and just kind of gauge the whole mindset of the generation in general. And uh, this generation, because of that amount of information, has uh, kind of developed a spectrum of opinions. So you have people who are very, very um, stuck on the concept of monogamy, and they value it possibly even more than the older generations did. You have people who are trying to figure out their way, which is, again, a whole spectrum of, uh, I don't know, opinions. And then you have people on one other end who are completely against the idea of monogamy. You know, they've possibly read a lot of books about evolutionary psychology. Then that whole school of thought that, you know, we're meant to have multiple sexual partners and all that. Um, and you, you also, at the same time, I'll tell you one thing for sure. I believe that uh, most young people I speak to generally have more of a spiritual element or a spiritual inclination than even their parents. Like it'll be the same family. The parents aren't re really that spiritually inclined, but the young person is. So either they, they completely have this idea of abstaining from sex, like completely, where they want to almost take up monkhood, or they look at uh, relationships from a very spiritual perspective of man and wife, or you need value a marriage, all that. So it's, it's this buffet of uh, opinions, honestly. On a personal level, I feel I'm like hyper romantic. I don't know, that's just... a uh, predetermined thing I was born this way so I, even I have this concept of like I really value monogamy I stand on that part of the spectrum but my mindset is not a reflection of like the whole youth's mindset but tell me something um, so let's go with the people who you feel the youngsters who believe that monogamy is just a concept that's completely outdated and um, it doesn't actually exist how do they tend to deal with life or their sexual life or their love life even? Um, you know, usually uh, there's a lot of casual sex that goes on in that part of the spectrum. That's what I have observed from my experiences. Um, and, and they kind of, I don't know, they kind of treat sex like how you treat going out to McDonald's. 
like that's how i kind of look at it like they kind of look at it as oh you know whatever we'll just we just have a good time that's not my again that, that's probably me being too stiff in my own head but that's not how i look at it uh there there's this word called demisexual which i believe it means that you only feel sexually attracted to someone when you also feel emotional uh love for them like you feel an emotional connection with them so these people kind of keep emotions out of their whole sexual experience and that's how they look at it um a lot of them seem to be doing all right uh, a lot of them are unhappy for sure some of them are even somewhere in the heart looking for a stable relationship even though they say that you know no no this is not something i believe in uh and some of them kind of a lot of them grow out of it i see i see that happening i'm 27 i have friends who are like 32 33 and i've seen them shift in their mindset over time where they say that oh okay you know as i grew up as i got out of my 20s i realized that i probably want someone to settle down with yeah i guess that comes to everybody gradually over time you know things change our mindsets change our viewpoints change but to go back to the other end of the spectrum the people who totally believe in monogamy i'd be interested to know what in the younger generation is the idea of monogamy i mean what is the what's the line um physical fidelity and emotional fidelity so you you don't sleep around with someone who's not your partner you probably don't even kiss someone who's not your partner you don't hold hands with someone who's not your partner that would be physical fidelity and emotional fidelity would be you know do, don't kind of uh, you don't need to have you need you don't need to find emotional solace outside of your own relationship um so i read this one quote which would make sense to a lot of young people at least it says that the moment you hide text messages from someone else uh, the moment you hide it from your actual partner your cheating has begun so that's how a lot of young people look at it that uh, i feel trust honesty uh, transparency these are concepts that are valued by younger folks uh especially the ones who really value monogamy and trust me there's a lot of people who value monogamy out there like it's it's not a small part of the spectrum i feel uh, you know i can talk very openly to you but i can't have these conversations with other people from your generation like uh, a lot of those other people have this pre existing uh, kind of outlook on our generation uh, but i feel i feel what they don't know is that there's a lot of people here who value monogamy despite growing in a world full of divorces despite coming from families where they've seen separation divorce fights um uh, i i also feel that while social media can be toxic it ha- it can play a role in making you a better human being because you become more empathetic you understand how other people's minds work you understand how other people's emotions work so you do become more romanticized as a human and you know that that part of the spectrum that does value monogamy i'd go as far as saying it's about 40 to 50% of young people at least um it's uh, interesting because again as you get older the ideas of that line change so i know that what you're saying is that you know when you're younger um your um uh, you know that your you are more spiritual that your ideas are more grounded in certain types of um, certain types of spiritual thought towards somebody that you love as you get older a lot of things sag and it's not only mm-hmm. the boobs that sag you know unfortunately your principles sag as well there's right. it's not just the belly that sags it it's yeah a lot of things do change and i find that this this line of monogamy shift so tell me what what do you think about fantasizing you said about emotional uh, monogamy what is what is your view on fantasies like if you fantasize about somebody else i think that's all right that seems yeah. all right to me right now so i once dated a girl i think this is when i was 16 or 17 who had a huge issue with me watching porn now i was a teenager back then like you know i think porn is a very natural thing for a 16 year old guy 15 16 year old guy uh but she she had an issue to the point where she would fight with me and break up with me if i if she ever found out i was watching porn so i found that very uh you know awkward but then i realized okay wait there's actually a lot of girls who think that way who don't like their partners watching porn lots of guys don't understand this you need to have a lot of conversations with those girls to understand their mindset uh you know so so here guys watch porn with the idea of oh okay i'm stimulated by something visual 
uh, let me stimulate myself by something new that's visual. They look at it as McDonald's, one day you're eating your filet of fish, next day you're eating your Maharaja Mag. That's how guys look at it. But women look at that same situation like, am I not good enough for you? Is my visual not good enough for you? And I'm dead sure there are vice versa versions of that, like uh, where maybe something that women think is very normal is looked at by guys as, oh, how can you do that? For example, I know a lot of Indian guys, a lot of girls will clap for me when I say this because I've, I've got a sister, I've got a mom, I've dated women. So I know that this is a very common issue in India. A lot of guys don't like uh, their girlfriends showing too much cleavage, especially in this country, or too much skin, where they'll actually go up to the girl and say, how can you wear that? Lots of Indian guys. And the guy mindset is, I know how other guys think. If other guys see you dressed like this, I know how they will think. But for women, it's like, no, this is a part of my feminine beauty. So women are possibly not even doing it for guy attention. They're doing it for themselves. They want to look beautiful. But that's not something guys can understand. I don't know. I don't even remember what the question was, but this is <laughs> nice. How it's like making, how we're doing this experiment with the mind. <laughs> <laughs> no, um, I, yeah, I do agree with you, what you just said. And yeah, let me clap for you also on that one. Um, <laughs> definitely. We have, I, I was saying that, you know, do you, uh, we talked about where you draw the line for fantasy. So do you actually, uh, sorry, where you draw the line for monogamy. So, um, you know, in our old Hindu mythologies, where um, the woman goes out and she thinks of another man and immediately her purity has disappeared. Those are the stories we have come down the generations with, okay? Now, I was saying, what do you think about fantasy? Because I've had people come to me and say, if you are with somebody, you're making love, but you're fantasizing about somebody else, that is wrong as well. Other people say, well, you know, fantasy is a really important part of me staying fresh in my sexual relationship. And it's okay if I fantasize about somebody else because I am physically um, uh, physically Same faithful loyalty. to one person. So where do you, where do you, and where do a larger number of the young people stand on the idea of fantasizing about somebody else when you are with another person? And I'll tell you why I'm asking this. I have three children who are all 30 downwards. And I understand from looking at them and all, all their friends and talking to them that they have very black and white ideas of monogamy, of fidelity, very black and white. It's either good or bad. And as you get older, those ideas shift, they become more fluid. So where do you stand on fantasizing about somebody else when you're with somebody else? Um, so... On a very personal level, I uh, I feel like I'm the kind of person who becomes very emotionally vested in to the other person. So uh, even if I've ever had sex with someone who I'm dating, there is a huge element of love, even if I've dated for a very long time. But that's just me. Uh, I also feel I'm someone who reflects who, whatever the other person's ideals and morals are. And I've not really dated someone who's discussed fantasizing outside of the relationship with me. Uh, I do understand your concept of sagging and gray areas in the spectrum because that's how a lot of young kids would look at alcohol. You look at drinking alcohol when you're growing up as like really bad. And once you grow up, you realize, okay, there's a gray spectrum as well where you shouldn't, you know, become an alcoholic, but once in a while it's okay. So I'm guessing that the same thing happens with sexuality. Uh, I've never really thought of that. If you ask me at age 27, I would probably say, that it's bad, you shouldn't. But that's, again, because I've never experienced it happening. I have had someone cheat on me and that really destroyed me. Don't mind saying that. I've said it on a lot of podcasts uh, because I didn't see it coming. Despite it, it seeming like a very emotionally fueled, love-fueled relationship. So uh, I guess as I'm growing up, even I'm understanding how these things work. I don't have an, a clear answer for you right now, ma'am. The thing is that sometimes these things happen where you step out of line or out of the drawn line. And even though it's not a good thing, it shouldn't be treated as the, the worst thing in the world. I don't know whether that's a good thing to say for people for, uh, on a podcast where young people are going to be watching, but I do think that um, there's a certain amount of perspective that has to be reached, you know, a certain balance. Hmm. Yeah, I, I think 
we in the modern world there are so many other factors that go into a relationship more than before i feel earlier relationships were a lot simpler now again it's the whole social media effect it's the information age effect uh it's just it could simply be the effect of people switching careers this is the first generation that's going to have to switch so many careers so uh because we live in these unprecedented uh, uh phases of humanity uh i think what you're saying is correct but again on a personal level i'm a huge supporter of monogamy uh, you know when you when you're dating someone you have your first um talk you have your first conversation about what your expectations are so i'm the kind of person who always says just please be 100% honest uh with me uh try not to cheat or do anything along those lines but uh, uh and and usually what i've always seen is all, all the girls i've dated and i have dated a lot of girls in my teenage and even now like after college and all that most girls are in that same mindset of yeah i completely agree with you let's be transparent and honest with each other and you know what i'll tell you this is the other good effect of social media you've got a lot of relationship infotainment as well like you know this podcast weird thing it's going to educate a lot of people on a lot of things it's going to help build other people's eqs therefore couples are having these conversations so um, a lot of people are in that zone where they treat their relationship as something they can work on Uh, and therefore i believe that monogamy is going to become the trend a lot like people assume that the next generation will stop getting married that early but what i've been observing is that a lot of people want to get married i i think of about marriage a lot like where i i think that you know there's too much rapidity in my life there's too much speed happening on me and i probably just need that emotional anchor uh, in my life and and that's not just me all my all my friends the guys the girls consciously talk a lot about marriage consciously talk a lot about fidelity um so i personally feel that monogamy part of the spectrum is going to keep growing so okay let's take for instance um people in a relationship determined to be monogamous determined to be faithful to each other all good intentions in the world we all get to a certain point in our relationship where things become a little bit boring now i want to say this from somebody who talks about relationships and talks about the idea of um, karma of love that it takes a great deal of effort to actually maintain a monogamous relationship to keep it exciting and good so that it's a it's a desire it's a voluntary notion rather than something that is put upon you because you don't have an out what would you think of as the path for monogamy i mean if you were laying out a set of rules for yourself in a relationship how would you maintain monogamy you give yourself enough time to think that you know going forward there are going to be things that eventually become boring i think a lot of communication communication a lot of shared experiences like i feel a lot of people look for their fun experiences outside of their relationship and my fun experiences i don't mean sexual experiences i just mean anything you know i want to go hang out with my boys instead of my wife and then i've also seen marriages where men say things like no my wife is my best friend i'd rather always hang out with her so i feel if you find your best friend you know how sharukh khan says pyar dosti hai <laughs> something something along those lines that's my um guess when it comes to monogamous relationships that you end up enjoying the company of that person so much that their natural state of being their natural uh, outlook on life actually helps you achieve your own goals and i'm not just talking about career goals so everyone has their own goals men have their own goals women have their own goals your job in a relationship is to help the other person achieve their goals is to make them uh, get the most out of themselves and if your natural state of being if you don't have to put any effort in that uh, direction you know just who you are as a person for, for for example i know i'm a very optimistic human being but uh, i the optimism sometimes uh, it makes me overthink about things so i tend to get a little bit hyper now if i'm with someone who's a lot calmer than i am but maybe who's not the most optimistic person therefore we balance each other out very naturally like she'll bring the calm to my life while i'll give her some of the sunshine like so i i that's just what i guess and that's what i'm saying to having experienced relationships myself that your natural state of being needs to match like a jigsaw piece 
Okay, so um, I love the idea of the fact that we have a whole younger generation growing up with this idea that monogamy is a good idea. I just want to give my little bit of advice to the younger people who would like to follow in this path. And that is that as you grow older, you will grow in different ways. So what you are at age 27, you will not be at age 47. And what you are at 47, you will not be at age 67 and so on. So you will grow in two separate ways. And you will come to a point where you're not going to be able to fit together like two pieces in a jigsaw. Mm. And that's where the, the entire idea of building your communication becomes so important. You mentioned that communication is what you rely on you'll find that that's what you rely on a great deal. And that's where it finding, that's where it will boil down to eventually. You know, the Kama Sutra actually really, really does, a, the Kama Sutra really does believe in monogamy. Uh, it actually says that the best lovemaking is always with somebody that you've been with for a very long time. I find a lot of people in, different age groups will say, oh, the chemistry has died out. You know, this is not for me anymore. Um, I need to be with somebody else. The Kama Sutra says that when you feel that that chemistry has died out and there's a comfort factor that has set in, that's when you have the best love making because you have to try a little bit harder for the arousal to come. And when you have to try a little bit harder, you experience every level of that arousal. And as all of you get older, Ranveer, you and all your wonderful age group of your generation of people, as they get older, I want you to remember this point when you feel like saying, okay, the chemistry has died out and I want to move on. Remember this point, come back to your partner because trust me, there is no better sex according to the Kama Sutra, and they knew what they were talking about. Mm. I mean, that's something I agree with. Not that I know much about the Kama Sutra as compared to you, but I, again, romantic dude who believes in old school love. I hope that you're always going to be romantic and that you will not be disillusioned in any way because um, that would be very sad. I like the fact that um, you think the way that you do. And I'm hoping that a lot of other people also find a way to think like that because you know what on a very personal level I think it gives you a great deal of joy yeah 100 percent. I, I also feel that the nature of my job is creative and creativity comes out of that same emotional pool that love comes out of so that that pool has to be kind of old school at least that's how how my creativity is as well uh, I, I strongly believe that that your creative work what you do for your profession your writing your video creation, your, the, the things you speak about on the internet, they come out of that same place that the words for your girlfriend come out of, the words for your wife come out of. So that's probably why I believe in monogamy. Wonderful. So um, Ranveer, just to close it off, I want to know the two things that we touched upon more than everything else. One was this whole idea of erectile dysfunction being connected in some way to exercise. And the other was the idea of monogamy and balancing out a relationship with romance and a personal life. If you have to give out one piece of advice to all of your listeners, what would that be? Um, so with erectile dysfunction, other than weight training or exercise, I have figured the power of raw food. So this is a conversation ma'am and myself were having, I think yesterday or day before when we did a pre-podcast conversation, where we were, we were talking about the power of raw food and how it just changes your stamina levels, your clarity, your uh, outlook, obviously your skin health, your the health of your hair, all that. Um, raw food will really change your life. Get into a habit of consuming it. Uh, Ayurveda says that you should consume it when the sun is out, you know, first thing in the morning before you consume anything else. And that's something I've been doing. I break my intermittent fasting style diet with a lot of raw food and I've seen the difference it's made. Whether it's in the gym, on the football field or anywhere else, there's just a different kind of mindset you have with it. So that's one piece of advice I'd like to give. And the second is probably uh, when it comes to fidelity, monogamy, um, I just feel that go back to what every ancient text in the world says, so whether that's the Bible, the Quran, the Gita, or any other ancient text, they always say that treat others as you treat yourself. And when you're in a relationship, someone else has like 
kind of handed their heart in your hand uh, so even while you may not take uh, monogamy that seriously or fidelity that seriously maybe for the other person and that person's past experiences infidelity is not something they would be okay with infidelity is not something that they would take lightly maybe it will hurt them for the rest of their life so don't play around with someone's trust that's what i'd probably say I love how you said it. Um thank you for that because I know that I talk a lot about what the Kama Sutra says and about what other ancient texts say but maybe it's all in the language that you use and I'm hoping that you as a younger person saying it the way that you have will actually reach a lot of the people who have written into us over the months about these two issues and I certainly hope that this is going to lead um to a better life for everybody i mean right now we could do with anything that makes our life better yeah with the problems that are hanging over our head but there is going to be life beyond this virus there are going to be relationships beyond this virus and we need to know how to nurture those and cherish those so uh here's to very very successful relationships in the future for everybody ranveer i can't thank you enough for being with us today you've been an absolute delight you always are No, and I, um, I I I have to interject and say that I look forward to every conversation with you because there's always some new learning just when I think that okay so now I've learned everything ma'am had to like or uh, teach I learn something new every time so I just whenever I speak to you I'm, my my first thought is okay this is what I'm I'm going to be adding something to my mind today you are very sweet you can see everybody listening in we have a mutual admiration society so as always do comment like subscribe if you have any questions the email address is info.seema.anand@gmail.com if you have any um specific questions for dr anvita madan behel she is on anvitamadanbehel.com and ranveer alabadia is on the ranveer show where you can write to him about any of his viewpoints we look yes. forward to seeing you again next week as always ma'am this was an honor and a pleasure thank you